we want to be particular about well, the specific what varieties that we're planting? That's a very good question. When you're planting a medicinal herb garden, uh, do you want to be looking at just the common names or the Latin names? Uh, it's actually very important to uh, work with medicinal plants always with Latin names. Okay. Always with Latin names. Um, even if you're uh, not even if you're not doing a garden, if you're um, working with... Yeah, so even if you're uh, purchasing uh, essential oils or medicinal herbs, always do it with the Latin name. Okay. Um, there are many uh, plants that have the same common name. For example, uh, let's take um, sage, for example. Um, out in the garden here, we have a number of different sages. One of them has a common name called Montana sage. It's not a salvia, it's an artemisia. So it's a completely different plant and with a whole different set of constituents. So you wouldn't want to be using that as a sage. Good question. What about you? commented on the various varieties of rosemary and I know mm -hmm. that's something I hadn't thought of mm -hmm. in, plant, in planning out what to plant. Lavender also has so many varieties. Lavender has a lot of varieties and usually the medici medicinal variety, the Latin name is going to have, um, for example, officinalis. Um, occasionally you'll see a plant called um, You'll see a plant called uh, like a Fischinalis or Angustifolia. Mm -hmm. The two can be sort of used interchangeably. And a Fischinalis just means it was the official variety for the pharmacopoeia, for the British or American pharmacopoeia. Oh. So it, it's telling you that that is the medicinal variety to use. And then, of course, there are a lot of um, commercial varieties of medicinal plants. Maybe they grow larger flowers, maybe they, they have a you know, greater shelf life or, or in some way, maybe they're bred for some other reason um, the way they are. So, and it's not to say that they won't have interesting constituents, but they're different. So you want to be sure you get the medicinal variety. Now with lavender, the medicinal variety is angustifolia. Lavendula angustifolia. The yield of angustifolia is not as good as lavender, which is the. Um, actually, I think lavender is intermediate, and they bred it with latifolia. I'll check on that. But um, they, when they bred it, they created a completely separate plant, which is this intermediate plant, which is lavender. And the interesting thing about lavender is it gives a much higher yield of oil, but it is higher in camphor, which is the stimulating ketone, and much lower in the ester. So it doesn't have a sedative action, it has more of a stimulatory action. So sometimes when people use lavender, and they're using lavender, they'll say, oh, it doesn't put me to sleep, it doesn't relax me, it doesn't work actually the wrong variety that they're using. So um, so out here around the garden, around the fountain, we have the real angustifolia, the real medicinal lavender. Um, and in the front, on the verge, we have the lavender, which makes a lovely cut plant. It has a lovely long stem. You can make wonderful, um, you know, lavender wands and uh, all sorts of things from it but it doesn't have the same therapeutic potential. Uh, and other plants too, like eucalyptus for example, there's lots of different varieties and eucalyptus globulus is usually the one you see uh, as an essential oil. Uh, it's quite high in a constituent called cineol and cineol is also known as eucalyptol. So if you see that uh, eucalyptol has, uh, eucalypt eucalyptus has eucalyptol and cineol in it. It's exactly the same 
constituent. It's just called different things. It's got um, a couple of different names. But that um, particular ingredient in um, globulars can be at around, it can be as high as 70%. It's high, yeah, it's high. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a very effective constituent <coughs> because it, um, it's a very good uh, antiseptic and antibiotic, mm -hmm. but it also has uh, some contraindications. So for children, um, it's much better to use a eucalyptus with a much, you know, not a significantly lower level of eucalyptol, but with um, less. And so a good uh, eucalyptus for children is uh, eucalyptus smithii, which is just another variety. So those are all things you learn the more, you know, the more you get to know your plants and, and uh, study your essential oils and it's, uh, but I'm a great believer in, in coming from the, the uh, focus of looking at what's in the plants. Uh, I, I believe pharmacognosy and active constituents you know, learning from that level really is a very effective way of studying therapeutic plant use because trying to just memorize what's good for what just doesn't, just doesn't, no, it just doesn't do it. Um, and of course everybody's an individual and you're going to be tailoring uh, your protocols with, you know, supporting people with a number of different things and uh, it really creates a tremendous freedom for you because once you know what constituents do what, you can choose all sorts of different plants that contain those constituents. Uh. <laughs>